Um, you can go to, you can make flights uh, from uh, Mars to Jupiter, no problem. SpaceX wants to go to Mars. They've talked about that for years. But there's another place Elon Musk has said he'd like to get there someday, Jupiter. It's an exciting target, especially since NASA has spent decades studying it, and yet it's still full of mysteries. So what's the deal with Jupiter, and how does SpaceX plan to get there? To begin, why do we even need to go to Jupiter in the first place? Named after the king of the Roman gods, Jupiter is one of those sites that never gets old. Even a small backyard telescope can reveal its sweeping red, orange, and yellow bands, along with the famous Great Red Spot, a gigantic storm that's been churning for at least two centuries and is still bigger than our entire planet. Jupiter itself is something of an ancient wanderer. It was likely the first planet to form in our solar system and may have been born much closer to the sun before drifting outward to where it sits now. On its journey, its immense gravity scattered asteroids and comets in every direction. Some of those objects ended up colliding with early Earth, possibly delivering water, and with it, the first hints of habitability. What's fascinating is that many of the exoplanets we've discovered around other stars look a lot like Jupiter, but orbit much closer to their suns. That pattern tells us that big planets often migrate, just as ours did. By comparing Jupiter with these distant cousins, we can get a better sense of how planetary systems shift and settle over time, and where life might have room to emerge. But when NASA thinks about where life could actually be hiding in the Jupiter system, the planet itself isn't the main attraction. Jupiter is surrounded by a faint ring system and at least 79 moons, four of which are surprisingly active worlds. They're so large and geologically interesting that Jupiter almost feels like a miniature solar system all on its own. Three of those major moons are believed to hide global oceans beneath their surfaces, which immediately makes them intriguing places to search for life. Europa, especially, stands out as one of the most promising spots beyond Earth. Its hidden ocean could challenge everything we thought we knew about where life can exist. Here on Earth, life is everywhere, but we still haven't found it anywhere else. When scientists think about searching for life beyond our planet, they focus on a few basic requirements, and liquid water tends to lead the conversation. Europa seems to have a vast, salty ocean beneath its icy shell, possibly containing twice as much water as all of Earth's oceans combined. Water is essential because it transports nutrients, supports metabolism, and helps cells manage waste. Europa's ocean probably sits above a rocky seafloor, and if hydrothermal vents are present, they could create the kind of chemical-rich environment that living organisms love. Of course, water isn't the only requirement. Life as we know it needs certain chemical ingredients. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, the elemental mix that forms the organic molecules inside every living thing on Earth. These elements were likely built into Europa from the beginning, and later collisions with asteroids and comets may have sprinkled even more organic material across its surface. Altogether, it paints a picture that feels surprisingly hopeful. A distant moon, locked under ice, quietly holding everything life might need. No wonder this place draws so much interest from a company dreaming of building a second home in the solar system. So, how does SpaceX actually plan to get to Jupiter? According to Elon Musk, the same spaceship designed for Mars colonization could eventually carry people all the way out to Jupiter's ocean-bearing moon Europa and beyond. Yep, I'm talking about Starship. And honestly, that's not a shock. From day one, Starship has never been just a Mars vehicle. It's been pitched as a true interplanetary ship. A few years back at the International Astronautical Congress in Guadalajara, Musk said, this system really gives you freedom to go anywhere you want in the greater solar system. Both the rocket and the ship run on Raptor engines fueled by methane and oxygen, and the key detail here is that both of those can be produced on Mars and even in other spots around the solar system. In other words, Starship doesn't need to rely on Earth for fuel forever. So, theoretically, Starship could travel incredibly far as long as it can refuel along the way. Musk laid it out pretty simply. By establishing a propellant depot in the asteroid belt or one of the moons of Jupiter, you can make flights from Mars to Jupiter no problem. And of all places out there, he said Europa would be a particularly exciting destination.
The key point here is that Starship can refuel in low Earth orbit, LEO, which basically restores its full mass capability once it's topped off again. According to SpaceX, this setup involves dedicated Starship tankers heading to orbit, docking with a propellant depot, and filling it up. When a mission Starship launches, it'll rendezvous with the depot, tank up, and then head off to the Moon, Mars, or wherever it's going. This is something that's never been done before at this scale, so a couple of things are worth noting. First, there's the docking itself. SpaceX currently plans for the tankers and the depots to dock side by side. Each vehicle is about 50 meters long, so lining them up and securely connecting the propellant transfer hardware isn't exactly trivial. Still, SpaceX is pretty confident. They've docked Dragons with the ISS for years, and docking two Starships is essentially docking two of their own systems. There's at least some built-in familiarity there. Next is the actual transfer of liquid oxygen and liquid methane. These propellants need to be kept cold, well below their boiling points, during the entire process. If they warm up, they start to vaporize, which increases pressure in the lines and raises the risk of leaks or ruptures. So the plumbing has to stay sealed, stable, and extremely reliable the whole time. And finally, the transfer needs to happen fairly quickly. Cryogenic propellants are always dealing with boil-off, where even tiny temperature changes cause them to slowly evaporate. More boil-off means you need more tanker launches, and to minimize that, SpaceX will probably need to send tankers up in rapid succession. They're already planning a second Starship pad at Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center to help with that. The cool thing about all of this, and what makes it so important for interplanetary missions, is that it's not limited to Earth orbit. You could put a depot in Mars orbit, or even, like Elon has suggested, set one up in the asteroid belt to make trips from Mars to Jupiter easier. This kind of infrastructure basically opens up the whole solar system. If Starship is fully refueled in LEO, it can do a direct transfer to Jupiter while carrying its full LEO payload, somewhere around 100 to 150 tons. And once you're headed to Jupiter, gravity assists there are powerful enough to sling a spacecraft pretty much anywhere else in the solar system, as long as you're willing to wait for the right transfer window. In practice, that means a fully refueled Starship is basically a 100 to 150 tons to anywhere vehicle. You could use it to send a 100-ton probe to Saturn just as easily as a 100-ton probe to Eris, or even farther out. Starship's job is really just to get the payload onto that Jupiter-bound trajectory. The payload can separate and start free-flying before it even leaves the Earth-Moon system, handling its own course corrections and mission operations from there. We've been exploring Jupiter for a long time, but what we've done so far is send relatively small probes. It all started with Pioneer 10's arrival in the Jovian system in 1973. Since then, up through 2024, we've sent eight more spacecraft to Jupiter, with two additional missions still on their way. Almost all of these missions were run by NASA, and most of them were flybys rather than orbiters or landers. In fact, every mission headed to the outer solar system has used a Jupiter flyby at some point, which makes Jupiter the most visited of the outer planets. The latest mission, Europa Clipper, is a NASA probe designed to study Europa in detail. Thanks to a SpaceX Falcon Heavy, it launched on October 14, 2024, from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Because of the spacecraft's size and the demanding trajectory, both the Falcon Heavy's boosters and first stage were expended on this launch. Europa Clipper's main goal is to investigate the evidence, first found by the Galileo spacecraft, which orbited Jupiter from 1995 to 2003, that Europa has a subsurface ocean beneath its icy crust. NASA originally considered missions like Europa Orbiter and the Jupiter Icy Moons Orbiter, which would have put a spacecraft directly into Europa orbit. But Jupiter's intense radiation environment makes that extremely risky. So instead, Europa Clipper will orbit Jupiter in a long, looping path and perform 49 close flybys of Europa. This approach dramatically reduces radiation exposure while still allowing high-quality science. Europa Clipper is also the largest planetary science spacecraft NASA has ever built. Its mission includes studying Europa's induced magnetic field, searching for potential water plumes, and running a suite of other tests designed to learn more about the Moon's structure, chemistry, and habitability. Looking into the future, China's CNSA has several missions lined up that involve Jupiter. First, they plan to launch two Xinsuo spacecraft, 
formerly called Interstellar Express, in 2026. These probes will use a Jupiter flyby on their way out to study the heliosphere. Separately, CNSA has announced the Tianwen-4 mission, aimed for around 2030. This one is specifically focused on Jupiter and its moons. Its goals include studying how magnetic fields and plasma interact within the Jovian system, examining the chemical variations in Jupiter's atmosphere, and exploring the internal structure and surface features of either Ganymede or Callisto. It will also investigate the broader space environment around whichever Galilean moon it targets. On top of that, CNSA is planning the Solar Polar Orbit Observatory, which will use Jupiter for a gravity assist. The idea is to pull off a mission similar to ESA-NASA's Ulysses, sending the spacecraft into a high-inclination orbit around the Sun to study its poles. So yeah, Jupiter is definitely a place worth going in the future. And with Starship, we could do a lot more than what small probes can manage today. In mid-November, during a public virtual meeting hosted by the U.S. National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, Elon Musk talked about Starship's scientific potential. It's extremely important that we try to become a multi-planet species as quickly as possible, he said. Along the way, we will learn a great deal about the nature of the universe. According to Musk, Starship could carry a lot of scientific instrumentation on its missions, far more than what's possible right now. We'd learn a tremendous amount compared to having to send fairly small vehicles with limited scientific instrumentation, which is what we currently do, he said. Musk even mentioned that you could land a 100-ton object on the surface of Europa. And honestly, 100 tons anywhere in the solar system is insane. You could literally build enormous autonomous research stations. Imagine something like an ISS-scale lab on every planet and moon we care about. That's mind-blowing. What makes these ideas possible is not just Starship's size, but the fact that it's designed to be cheap to launch. Agencies like NASA and ESA have to carefully pick just a handful of missions because each launch costs tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Starship could change the game completely. With launch prices potentially dropping to just a few million dollars, access to deep space science becomes way more democratic. You could even imagine privately funded missions or groups of citizens teaming up to send their own experiments into space.